Hey there, explorers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer. Episode 53, The Lost Planet. Okay, uh, doo -doo -doo. this is a bit of a story world. The bitterly cold surface of Sentinel rolls beneath me. The poles locked in endless winter. Only lucky arrangements of weather produce marginal habitability in small regions. And indeed, there is a weak radio signal detectable in the midst of such a conjunction. It transmits a weak transporter, uh, transponder signal in hegemony standard protocol. An old code, but it still checks out. Uh, a sensor sweep reveals a tiny settlement with signs of primitive industry and agriculture. Your standard comms request gives no return. If there is a comms network or even an emergency survival unit on the surface, it's either damaged or can't make a connection. Your surface comms officer tries a more unconventional workarounds from a suite of ancient standards used to ping drifting domain era relics to the latest suite of underworld methods that would earn a stern look from any honest customs officer. Lossy but easily mistaken for background noise by sensor grids. All attempts are fruitless. Captain, we might have to make contact the old fashioned way. Your comms officer reports apologetically. Take a shuttle down to investigate. You step off the shuttle, a frosty ground crunching beneath your boots. Your Enviro suit has no trouble keeping you completely comfortable despite the biting wind. The settlement is about a kilometer off. You've landed at a polite distance on a rocky plateau to avoid disturbing some of the muddy gray fields of some agricultural effort. A party of the inhabitants wearing masks and hoods meet you halfway. Their guards at the back hold weapons slung, standard domain fab carbines. Uh, their clothing is uh, repurposed utility forge cloth, the type used in line cargo bays and maintenance conduits. They wear adornments denoting status made of, of worn but well-polished military insignia, winged phoenixes, and stars. Gemini crew survivors, and they've been here for a long time from the looks of it. A leader steps forward, pulling off their goggles. Did we win? She asks. <laughs> this reminds me of... um. Japanese military on remote islands in Japan, not knowing that World War II had ended. <laughs> this is very akin to that. Uh, the first AI war or the second? The leader exchanges glances with her companions, taking in the implications of your words. You're invited to their settlement to continue your conversation out of the cold. The castaways have not forgotten um, hospitality in their manner. Or perhaps their leader, an elder by the name of Alo Skiron, called commander by her lieutenants, knows the wisdom of controlling the spread of potential explosive news from the outside sector. You are led to a cluster of neat low structures, earthwork, and hull panel spotted and forge glass and chimney. Uh, the streets are clean and the citizenry uniformed by job role. Despite fixing you... With open stairs, they do not falter in their assignments. Commander Skarin welcomes you and your party into a central meeting hall. It is warm and festooned with hegemony paraphernalia uniforms, weapons, etched insignia from supply case lids. Their handworked reverence brings to mind a Luddock sh shrine that has undergone conversion uh, to worship a martial god. You pretend to sip a wretched yeast-derived ersatz tea. Coffee, maybe? Given to you by Skaran attendants. Mm, that's good. I'll be polite. You come from the core worlds, yes? Skaran asks. We must get back in contact with our proper chain of command. The protocol commands it. Behind her, attendants and guards all mumble something in unison. You think you catch a word? Protocols. You will bring word of us to Persian hege hegemony, oh man, of the 14th battle group. They must have survived, yes? The protocols promise that you will be rewarded and we saved. Behind her, in unison, you hear the intoned words reward and salvation, and not quite the sing-song of group prayer. Now you can see the strange gleam in Skurn's eyes, as if she is looking at the unwitting savior of her, from her religion. And yet, at the same time, something like fear, even panic, under the mania. You are an outsider. They don't have outsiders here. 
Uh, I'm going to catch her up with the current history of the sector. So, one of the guards passes a satchel of data pads preloaded with the current affairs of the primers used by the salvers of the fringe. All right. And we improved our relation with them by two. Um, I would like to ask some questions. You can tell me about the protocols. So there were regulations that they adhere to for over a hundred cycles. Um, how do you come to live at this place? They were descended from the crews of the Hegemony Flotilla during the Great AI War. So this is why Hegemony um, outlaws AI cores. Basically, there was an AI uprising. The Hegemony led the way. They fought the AI. Um, it was devastating. And uh, this is one, this is like a marooned part of their flotilla. Uh, what happened to your starships? They won't discuss it. Do you want to stay here? It is our duty to man the post. Um, confront with something I know. I found your gantries in orbit, but no fleet. Our ancestors constructed a temporary dockyard. Uh, but yeah, no fleet. Okay. Interesting uh, to find them there. Does that... Um, I don't know if it prompts me to go talk to Hegemony elsewhere, though. Interestingly. But yeah, a little piece of um, uh, history or something down there. Okay, uh, fuel missions. Let's look. Tharos and Netter Krektet. Let's go to Tharos. I think I have the fuel to get there and back. Uh, now I have about a million, so let's invest this. Uh, trying to figure out what I want to build. So there's... I could save up a little bit for a Star Fortress at uh, Agraville, and I think that's what I'll do. Because Agraville has the lowest stability, so it uh, makes sense to um, stabilize it as far as I can. I'm also going to poke around to see if there are gates around, because I want to be able to uh, freely return home. I'm going to do some hopping. Yep, there's a gate here. Okay, so I'm going to use Black Emperor's Gate to get home. Um, almost every ship in my fleet is have their demod removed, so I don't really need to roll around the solar system with them. Cheeky mate, thank you for gifting out a sub and resubbing. And Rob for the uh, the sub as well. And Ink for the gifted sub. And Hashimoto for the resub. Sorry, I missed all that because I was like in the middle of reading all the story stuff. A poor excuse. Uh, a Gorgon blueprint, a Gazer blueprint, a Claw Wing that we already have. And there's a lot more stuff here too. In fact, there's even a fleet. Most fleets leave me alone. A Prometheus tanker blueprint. An orbital habitat with oh, yet another captain. And a bunch of stuff I don't have space for. You know, actually, I think we have an organics um, uh, deficit at our home world, so I'm going to throw out the metals in lieu of the organics, because maybe I can hand off those organics back home. They're not, uh, they're really not worth enough for me to bother putting into stable orbit, because they're pennies on the dollar, but, like, I'll still take it. A weapons cache with a omen. I don't care about the omen. But we got dual flak blueprint. That's nice. Longbow and claw wing blueprints. Cool. Uh... What was that noise? Oh, I failed to analyze the derelict ship. Oh, well. The the penalty is not great enough for me to care. Oh, what the hell? Uh.
Uh, so this is a bounty hunter that was uh, hired to kill me, but I'm no longer hostile with Tritac, but he doesn't really care, so he's attacking me anyway. Uh, so we are going to school him in politeness. And yeah, my streams are almost always four hours, except for marathons, which run up to about 12. Every now and then I go over time, but, but not that frequently, because, you know, I have a wife, and I have a toddler, and I have responsibilities, so I can't just be willy-nilly with my schedule. So these are, like, uh, decent ships. I mean, they're all, like, S-modded with like tons and tons of S mods. So it's like a super high uh, tuned fleet that I'm fighting, but they're not powerful ships really. They're just been improved as much as they can. So the salvage here is actually potentially sexy because they're a bunch of S modded phase ships, depending on the S mods that they have. So we'll see what I end up getting as a result. Uh, where can I fight? These ships are, face ships are very annoying for me to fight though, because they just keep sabotaging my ship and phasing and makes it very hard to kill. So what I ought to do is just focus on like one specific inflictor. There we go, bye. Focus on this inflictor. They also have horrible, ooh, I accidentally kicked Tusk. Tusk, come up here. They also have horrible um, uh, runtime, so that they, their combat readiness, most phase shift combat readiness goes to to, to crap very quickly when in uh, long combat. Um, my guess is given their S mods, their deployment times are gonna be a little bit longer than normal. Uh, because generally when you have phase ships, you try to stabilize them for long deployments. So that's probably how they're built. Meaning that I can't rely on them just like falling apart. I would love to... Here, let me, I'm going to go up and go help the Legion that's getting swarmed. Oh god, this Legion is more than getting swarmed. It's getting popped. Bye, Legion! It's disabled, so it'll be easy to recover. But yeah, you can think of these as like swarms of bees or hornets. Where they're on their own, they're not particularly powerful, but like you get swarmed enough and you get taken down. You know, like hyenas attacking prey or something. What the hell? <laughs> okay. So I'm watching my flux. Yeah, the other ships are getting taken down in the same the same sort of way. I've seen them hit me with uh, dumb fire torpedoes, so I know they don't have a lot of um, burst dumb fire ammo left. So dropping my shield to vent was not that risky. And this afflictor is almost dead. Yeah, sit behind me. Trust me, that is a very bad spot for you to be. got out of my range. My Paragon is not the right ship to be fighting these things. Like a... A Doom might be really good against other phase ships, like phase versus phase, whereas Dooms can set a bunch of the uh, antimatter bombs and make the phase ships blow up once they unphase, uncloak. 
Yeah, these ships are designed to be annoying. Exactly. And they're taking down my Dominators. But because I'm a scrapper, I don't really care about my ships getting damaged. Because we'll just recover them. It will be a big cost to crew, but I'll just... Uh, I'll port home because we're next to a gate. Yeah, middle-sized ships that have high maneuverability, like um, pirate e uh, falcons, would be good against these. Pirate falcons move very fast and have low deployment cost, so they're pretty good against uh, phase annoyance. Okay, there's only a few left. Uh, the other ships that are really good against these are ones that are really good at um, constant pressure. So, like, even the Pegasus with its squalls would be pretty effective against these because the squall missiles would be constantly firing against these... Um, phase ships, so as soon as they unphase, they get hit by a bunch of squall missiles. But really, really any ship that has, like, high pressure um, and high suppression weapons would be effective, too. So, ion cannons, ion beams, squalls. Um, hypothetically, the Legion would have been, but uh, it depends on the fighters that the Legion has and how overwhelmed the Legion got. But my Paragon's pretty effective because it doesn't... It's very hard to harass a Paragon to death, as you may have noticed. I took, like, no damage. Because I could just outlast them. All right, so let's claim victory. Consider getting all my ships back that are now re-demodded. Lovely. But I didn't get a lot of ships off of them. Unfortunately, not ones that I... Uh, we're worth having. Okay, let's get back to core and um, and put our fleet back together because our fleet's been pretty thoroughly ruined now. Hey, ruins at Black Mass. Oh, all right, just an Alpha Core sitting in that, uh, in that ruin. Sure, got my attention. up here before we jump through. Uh, let's go to... Hmm. Let's go to Kanta. Go to Kanta, uh, grab some more supplies for the trip home, and uh, sell off the stuff we don't need, because I know I'm over capacity, so we're burning supplies fast. I just figured that Kanta needed the heavy armaments, and I was right there in high demand, so that's why I came here. Uh, I don't need two Alpha Cores, so I'm even going to sell one on the black market. Organics. Before I sell the organics, let's check if any of our planets need it. If it's in deficit. No, our planets are fine, so I can sell the organics here too.
I got three clawing group learns. <laughs> okay. Triplicate! Yes. That's everything I want to part with. Good amount of money. Can definitely afford that um that uh, that upgrade now. Um I'm not gonna top up my crew here because I have a lot of crew back home, so I'm just gonna buy some black and market supplies and fuel here. And then get home. So in Agraville, we're upgrading the battle station to a star fortress. So if anyone uh, messes with us again, they get it's gonna be very hard for them to win. Okay, I am going to store the ships that aren't demodded. Um, actually, let's take little friend because I need to refit them. So steel boot needs to be refitted. Harpoons are fine. Auto cannons are fine. Yeah, that's fine. Missile racks, armored weapon mounts. Uh, let me compare it with the other ones that I have. It's faster. Is that a pirate model? No. Okay, so I'll compare it with the non-pirate models. So, yeah, they are... They're the same. Okay, that's fine. And then little friend is going to get cargo and f efficiency fuel maybe cargo and insulated engine for the role playing of like you're supposed to be a stealth ship so that's how I'll do them so little friend is going to come with me tannering and steel boot are going to be left behind and then I'll also take glitch with me as well I want to run. I want to get in the habit of taking the um, the smuggler ships with me regularly, so that they hide the illicit things that I have in them, because they have shielded cargo. So they're built the same. Cool. So I'm gonna roll around with Cowley and Simply Fig just so that we can remove the demods because they got um, they got a little destroyed. And. Uh, Learning from our mistakes. Fuel. Some supplies. Oops, that's not supplies. Some supplies. Uh, learning from our mistakes. I'm also going to um, take some eradicators with me as well because they would have been more effective against those annoying attacks that I faced. But some pirate eradicators because they're cheaper to deploy. Okay, cool. Uh, let's also make sure to have enough crew that if we have some losses, we don't go understaffed. Because I have enough money that it's not the 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 cost. So I have a, about a thousand crew over what I need. So if some ships do get destroyed, we have plenty of people to fill those roles without uh, being understaffed. All right. And we're good to go again. Uh, so ETA on the gate ship is only 60 days or 57 days. Uh, we do also have some sleepers here, but no active attacks from the um, from the LUDs. So it's it's coming, but it's not active. So. They're being organized at Agraville and Backroad Runner, but there's no impacts of them yet. Cheers. Um, question for you all. Should I continue the rep 
missions or go for the cash. The rep missions are timed, so if I don't do them, I do lose rep, which is kind of counterproductive. But if you want to see what's in that um, that hidden cash, I can go back for the cash instead. I'll give you one minute to put on that. Monthly income. Just about broke even with all the withdrawn stocks. How close am I to growing? 61 at f about 6% and... Okay, so Backroad Runner should grow soon, which is good. So a little reminder, it was Anyang that had the, um, that had the cash. Uh, uh, here. So going there, I've got gates at Wendigo and Black Emperor right next to Anya, so it'd be very easy to go back for it quick. And it looks like that is the, uh, the popular option, it seems to me just by a, a wee bit. So I am going to get the people together to manage that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take some punching ships. Prometheus, the Dominators, the Eradicators. I'm gonna leave the uh, the really heavily demodded Abixable behind. Because um, super demodded ships, uh, I don't think are going to be super helpful here. And then I'm also going to opt to take... Um, I'll just take Ginkap. I don't think I have the story points to make it worth uh, Stutastig being useful. Uh, but Ginkav... I might refit a little bit. Because it's not built well. Now, it's built well enough, but, like, it could really be overhauled significantly. Okay, so there's the fleet. And I'm going to put the captains in myself for some of them to make sure that I have the right captains, the right spots. So we definitely want Wishbringer in the Pegasus. We want Glitch in the Ginkav. Oh, I don't need you anymore. Bye. And then the rest don't really matter. Bring enough um, crew to crew it all up. Actually, I'm gonna max out my crew here. Bring as much crew as we can. Bring a little bit more fuel, a little bit more supplies, and we're good to go. So current priority right now is um open the protected cache. I don't know why Snoozer had suspended repairs. Resume all repairs, please. There we go. It could be so convenient to be able to just gate out from my home system soon. The fastest way there is to go to Samail, I think. Oh, that slipstream was the wrong direction. It's very fussy about the directionality. Because you have to uh, you have to be aligned to the gravity well perfectly, and if you're off by a little bit, it's way wrong. It'd also be nice to pick up some 14th salvage. I do have the story points for it, so 
there's a potential to get a 14th onslaught that's like super S modded and a 14th legion that is super S modded, which would be, depending on the S mods installed, would be very, very spicy as salvage. It would help our combat red uh, combat ability immensely. The gate has not yet arrived now. That is arriving in uh, pretty soon. The next maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. So Nick the Good now has a Megaport, which is going to help. The Megaport helps with accessibility and pop growth. So that's going to help Nick grow and uh, trade better because of the uh, Megaport accessibility. And uh, Backroad Runner is getting a Megaport pretty soon to here too in 14 days. Good investments. Max, thank you for the resub. Cheers. All right, hidden cash. So we have to destroy a souped up onslaught. Sorry, one sec. Yoda's a little neurotic, you know, small dog neurosi, and uh, he likes to chew up his paws. So I have to, if you're wondering what I do often, I have to like position him so he can't chew his paws easily because he'll chew his paws until they get like really irritated and horrible. And I medicated him today, but he's like especially neurotic today, I guess. All right, so this is a bit of a tough fight. So here we go. Let's deploy. The, on, the uh, Invictus, the Pegasus, my ship, and a pirate eradicator. Hmm. Don't have enough points. What? How many points am I missing? Just a few. Maybe Legion and two eradicators? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Cheeky mate, thank you for the bits. Uh, and I'll just have them on, on full attack. My guess is that souped up onslaught is going to just like blitz us. Oh man, they're already in our face. So this is going to be a big duking brawl very, very early on. Oh, nice. The Invictus going crazy. That gets us an eagle early on. That onslaught is uh, going after me. I fortress shielded so it can't hurt me. And then I think the Invictus is going to turn on the onslaught and... Yep, yep, oh yeah. Thank you, Invictus. Molnir cannon spam. Ooh, fortress shield again. And that's going to push this onslaught back. Because it wants to vent now. Allowing me to vent, giving me a little bit of spade, especially if that Invictus uh, pushes this Falcon off of me. I'm gonna drop my shield so I can start passive vent. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, yeah, that, that was some spicy barrage. All right, I'm gonna go help the West here. The, um, our legion is duking out with their legion. The thing is, I can recover my legion pretty inexpensively if it does blow up. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to take out the west ships here, so that then we we can sweep east. This dominator has thumpers, which is not a very effective uh, weapon. And that onslaught is, yeah, it's probably gonna destroy the. Um, the Legion while I'm over here, but you know, it's okay. So it will be recoverable. Sorry, Legion. All right, so my Invictus go after the Onslaught. I'm gonna um, queue it up as a command, a direct command. That's why I brought the Invictus, because the Invictus is like, can punch hard, which is what you need against an Onslaught. So here's the Onslaught Barrage. And it backed up just enough to avoid the uh, the Invictus's barrage there. Good 
barrage. I'll see if I can capitalize on that now. Yep, flux is maxed on that uh, onslaught. That gives me opportunity to punch it in the nose. And then the falcon that was left just blew up from the eradicator. Oh yeah, this is a death knell. That's a death barrage. Oh, almost death barrage. And then I'm gonna wanna disengage from the, there we go. The Legion actually stopped paying attention to me. So uh, Invictus, go after the Legion now. Uh, I could reinforce, but I don't really need to because we're just about done. But you're right. Like if I was worried, I would do it. But I know that the enemies had big ships, but not many ships. So they didn't have the numbers to. Um... So as long as I take out their big ships, we're fine. This is an endurance fight. It's a sprint. Here comes another Invictus Barrage. Done. So now there's only one Enforcer left. Interesting to see the Invictus actually use. Yeah, I put in Maulnir Cannons and gave it a lot of maneuverability so it can... Um, the Invictus is really terrible at attacking many small things. It's really good at attacking big things. So it's good at attacking star bases and big ships. Uh, so it's very expensive to run because of the amount of crew that it needs. It needs like 60,000 credits worth of crew a month because of its giant crew. But it's effective. So... Recovery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you... Oh, uh, you know, I'll take it all. That is an onslaught, a 14th onslaught, 14 legion, 14 falcon, 14 eagle. God damn. All right, the rock that had the Atomus fleet was defending is pocked with hidden hole, hiding holes. Um, empty. And fuel and supply stores also empty. After a thorough sensor sweep, your ops chief finally gives you the order and the salvers move in to uncover a camouflage access point. The shaky image of a helmet cam reveals a carapace of terrestrial death glimmering in the chaotic play of suit lamps. One planet killer. Your ops chief cuts the excited chatter with salvers with a harsh word and then return to procedural call and response. The planet killer is secured in her flagship. A lost planet killer is an object of dread which looms over every human in the Persian sector. It is the bane of Opus, of Hanan Pacha, of other worlds and uh, such atrocities was unleashed upon. Many a uh, powerful faction will want to secure this weapon so that they may not be dethroned in shock atrocity. Uh, and many minor faction will use it to secure respect and protection. Lud only knows what the Pathers would do with it. Say nothing of pirates. So we got a planet killer, a specialized warhead capable of sundering a world. Operating uh, principles are only dimly understood and are thought to involve utilizing a world spin and some form of resonance. This one is safe and requires authorization uh, authorization codes possibly long lost and becoming anything more than a complicated but completely inert piece of machinery. So this is a planet killer that we just got from that hidden cache. Uh, while I'm out here, let's also pick up the um, 14th dry docked ships as well that are left here from before, because I think I might have the crew for them as well. Oops, what am I doing? Uh, transfer cargo. Transfer ships. Okay. And now we have a hell of a lot of uh, raffling to do. So what do we have? We have got... These ships. So we have a 14th Eagle. A, a unnamed 
which has so their um their S mods are not what I would have chosen. Um, but these are automated ships, which is to say that they do not and cannot take on human crew. So they're kind of like AI ships, but not. So in this series, uh, let me reference the rules here. As you can see, we're not allowed to use redacted ships or no Omega or redacted weapons and no use of AI cores for pilots or governance. I don't have specific rules about fully automated ships. Um, so they're not against the rules, but it's weird that they are not human crewed. Um, so we have a bunch of these fully automated ships here. So we've got a fully automated uh, Falcon, a fully automated. So this is another Falcon AA unnamed. An onslaught. And uh, the automated ships usually require specialized equipment, um, resulting in a maximum combat readiness penalty of 100%. So they're not very easily combat ready, which is their big penalty. Um, but still, a very nice find. And I'll be, let's uh, start the raffle timer now. So they're not ships that I think would be good substitutes for our normal ships because of the automated nature of them. But if we needed, um, if we needed just like brute force for some reason, uh, they're very nice to have. And there is also the automated ships ability, which adds to the combat readiness of automated ships, but that's not a uh, that's not a skill I'm I'm planning on getting. So whole bunch of so some of these are um, the two that I picked up from the Sentinel gantries are not automated ships. The others that I just de defeated from the cache are automated ships. So they're they're two different types of Fourteenth Legion, in other words. And I'm going to be bringing them back home because I'm like out of fuel. I have enough, hoping I have enough fuel to even get home because it's expensive. So this would reduce the combat readiness penalties, in other words. So as you can see, the, the maximum combat readiness of this is 70. It's actually, that's not that bad. 70 is, 70 is respectable. Um, it's just because I can't put people in them. Um, because we don't use cores in this series. I can't put captains in them. They don't get combat ready ready past. Uh... Oh, uh, talk to the lady. Yeah, too late. Sorry. Yeah, we could have talked to whatever her name was. Okay, I'm failing a bunch of other missions. Oh, well, we knew that that was going to be a problem. We voted against that. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 26th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow privateers.